So this year was the last year of official Xbox 360 support from Microsoft and the marketplace has shut down and I was there to witness it. Going from a beautiful Metro dashboard to whatever this is, um, yeah, it's unfortunate. Either way, for the last five years or so, I've been actually actively collecting for the console. Well, I was kind of a late bloomer because I got my 360 console in 2012, which was the last year of the console's full lifespan because a year later it was replaced by the all-in-one entertainment system. Anyways, figure I show you my collection, so let's get right into it. Uh, it's not the biggest collection ever, and that's because, well, let's say I travel a lot, and this collection has been all over the globe, and this isn't the only thing I have. I also have a ton of PC games and some PS2 games as well, so obviously not everything is here. There are a couple of games I'm missing, which I might mention, but this is a video about the games I currently have and which I do play. First of all, the Halo Reach slash Fable 3 2-in-1 pack. This came with my Xbox 360 Slim and first thing I did was complete Halo Reach. The reason is, is because Halo was the only reason I even got my 360, which isn't a unique reason. Pretty much everybody that I know who's had a 360 got it for Halo, so I did too. And at the time I've only beaten Halo 1 and 2. So this was my third Halo game that I've completed. In terms of Fable 3, I've only beaten it like last year, I think, in Couch Co-op. And I didn't really like it, kind of because I've completed 1 and 2 prior. And in comparison, well, it's just kind of boring. There are no consequences in that game, so dying is meaningless. They might have as well removed all the enemies, but some dialogue is fun, some quests are fun. That's really all I can say about Fable 3. Halo Reach, on the other hand, is definitely worth playing. If not picking it up on the 360, then definitely pick it up and play it on the Master Chief Collection. Next up, Far Cry 3 slash Far Cry 4 2-in-1. Uh, I'll be honest, I haven't beaten it. I just couldn't bear the frame rate and the FOV in that game. It's pretty bad, uh, at least on this 360 version. I might trade it in later or something like that. But yeah, these days I don't recommend getting it on, uh, on 360. Either of these games, just play it on modern gen or the PC. Next is actually something interesting, Ninja Gaiden 2. So before getting this, I already got Ninja Gaiden 2 Sigma and I've played Ninja Gaiden 1 and 3 already on uh, PC and I played the remastered version. So why did I pick it up on the 360? Purely for collection purposes? Not really. Ninja Gaiden 2 and Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2, which is meant to be like a remaster slash remake, they're almost completely different games. There are tons of content that's present here that's not present in Sigma, and there is some content that was present in the original Sigma for the PS3 that's not in the remaster. It's a long story, but in a nutshell, I wanted to get the 360 version because it's the original and it's purely the creator's vision. It's hard as heck and it's often unfair. It was definitely worth it purely to see all the gore, <laughs> which is the main reason I got it. The decapitation, it was removed in the later games uh, and blood was replaced with whatever that blue thing was that came out of enemies, so it's kind of strange. I wanted to experience the original version and I did, and it's different in a lot of aspects. So if you're gonna play Ninja Gaiden 2 Sigma, I do recommend picking this up with the 360 if you want to experience the original uncut version. There are a lot of moments, quite frankly, in this game, which will annoy the heck out of you, but it is worth checking out if you have the time. At the very least, play it on the easiest setting that you can, which is still quite difficult in this game. <laughs> so, yeah. Next, Spyro Dawn of the Dragon. This is from the Legend of Spyro series, which is the second Spyro trilogy. The only reason I got it is because, well, it has campaign co-op, and I'm a sucker for co-op games, especially if it includes the campaign. So that's the reason why I got it, to play it with my buddy and it didn't disappoint. It's the third installment in this trilogy, which means I did miss out and 
didn't experience the first two, but it doesn't really matter. It's a self-contained story, it's pretty fun, and for whatever reason it plays like God of War. The original God of War. <laughs> yeah, the slasher. I don't know why they did that, but either way it was a pretty cool formula and it did work. And it was kind of fun. Next is Crash of the Titans, which is a Crash Bandicoot game. Also, once again, I got it for campaign co-op, and it's pretty fun. Just don't play it on hard. Now I know this channel is called Hard Mode Enabled, which kind of dictates that I should always play games on hard, but I figure that hard mode would have been just easy. I don't know why I assumed that, probably because it was like a 7th gen game slash 6th gen, and I thought that, uh, I mean, probably story mode difficulty in this thing. So I played it on hard, and then suddenly, like, three levels in, there was a sudden difficulty spike, and I actually kind of struggled with my friend. But we did eventually beat it, and it was quite fun. The jokes are pretty good, the comedy's there. It does feel like a good Crash Bandicoot game. Does it play like the original? No. Does it play like the original trilogy? Still no. But it is fun. Dark Souls 2. I didn't beat it. I have one achievement in this game, and that's for dying. And the way I died wasn't to an enemy, but I actually just rolled off a cliff. I'll come back to it later at some point. Maybe I should start with the first one and then slowly build up from there, but yeah. I didn't beat it yet, so I can't really comment on it, unfortunately. Fable 2. I don't even know if it's better than Fable 3. Again, no real consequences to dying. There are some fun elements in it. If you want to just play a game brainlessly, then it can be fun in that way, but it's just... It's just boring. There's no reason for the enemies to exist in this game because there's like no checkpoint system or anything. If you die, then you just respawn and that's it. Dante's Inferno. This one's quite interesting. I've actually completed it first time this year. And I remember uh, I went to a cosplay convention this year as well and somebody was cosplaying uh, Dante, which surprised me because this is a quite forgotten game because it's made by Visceral Games and they made Dead Space and they were shot down in like around the 2017-ish, 2016-ish era. Yeah, should have been a, a series from what I recall because the game left on a cliffhanger but it never came to fruition and the reason is, is well I guess it didn't sell properly or at least it didn't sell as well as um, EA wanted them to. But it's fun, it plays like God of War, and yeah, no real complaints here. Check it out on newer systems if you can, play it, it is fun, worth your time. Oh, Gears of War Judgment. Well, I might as well pick up all the Gears of War I have, which is Gears of War 2, 3, and the first one. All four are equally fun, though at this stage I don't really recommend picking them up on the 360, even for collection purposes, like, just play them on the newer consoles. At the very least, just play the first one on the newer consoles, because unlike this remaster, uh, the remaster of Cures of War is actually faithful to the art style, and it does look as pretty as it should have been, and, and the remaster has a lot more content. So, yeah, um, Gears of War, this one you can skip getting on the uh, 360 if you want to get it physically for whatever reason, just get it as a remaster. You can skip out on Judgment. Judgment is fun, but it, it plays kind of differently in some aspects. Also, the levels are kind of short and smaller in this one, but it does hold up graphically pretty well and it does look quite pleasing. But yeah, Gears of War, all fun. I recommend all of them, except for 4 and 5. Those I can't speak of. Call of Duty Black Ops. The reason I got this is because I have fond memories of LAN parties and playing Black Ops Zombies. Once again, I got it for playing, well, campaign co-op, just like Gears of War, just like a ton of these games here. Well, not campaign co-op, but just like couch co-op, I guess. Um, yeah, I got it for Black Ops Zombies, and um, there's a little bit of a problem. The seller sent me a, uh, a botched copy because this one is used to the point of being dead. Yeah, it doesn't work, so it's pretty much paperweight. Unreal Tournament. No real reason to get it. 
I thought that it would have like campaign co-op, which it kind of has, but it's campaign co-op, it's just a bunch of multiplayer levels structured in like a story scenario. It's fun, if you want to waste some time playing with your friends, then yeah, maybe pick it up, but nothing really to say about it. Aliens vs Predator 2010. Now this is actually something I recommend getting. It has three campaigns, you can play as the Marines, the Predators, and the Aliens, and it's quite fun. Separately, the campaigns are sure, but put together it does equal to about a 12 hour experience, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, depending on fast, how fast you play. The <clears throat> combat system, specifically the melee combat system, is pretty fun. If you get to learn it, you can beat this game on its hardest difficulty without any issues and without any checkpoints. But yeah, this game, it's pretty fun. If you master it, playing the game is really fun. Unfortunately, the multiplayer is dead on both PC and Xbox, and I think the PS3, nobody really plays it. But other than that, it's pretty good. Uh, and speaking of which, this is my second copy of this game because I have, well, I originally got it on PC. And the reason I have it on 360 is because, well, my dad just found a bunch of 360 games for cheap. And he just bought them and he's like, here you go. I'm like, hey. Just for context, it was like 2018 at that point. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I guess you can't say no to a, to a gift. Dead Space 2, equally as good as Dead Space 1. I recommend it, it's fun. Made by Visceral Games, same, same developers that made uh, Dante's Inferno. Yeah, doesn't improve on the original. I don't know, but I do like the setting of the second one a lot better because it's set on this uh, space station that's been recently overwhelmed. And yeah, graphics looks better, gameplay plays fun, the story's pretty good. So yeah, you should pick it up. Halo 3. I remember looking at this little thing here uh, on store shelves wanting to get it. But there was no point because I didn't own a, uh, a 360 at the time, so I could only wish. But eventually, one day I came home from school and my dad's like, here you go. And I had a lot of fun with it. I still prefer the campaign of Halo 2. I know, I just committed the cardinal sin of saying that. But I do think the campaign of Halo 2 is better, though the multiplayer of Halo 3 is a lot more balanced. So yeah, not necessary to pick it up these days because, well, the Master Chief Collection exists and you can play it there and it's equally as good. But uh, yeah, if you want to pick it up for collection purposes, then go ahead. Also, in some cases, I don't know if in all cases, but in some cases, pun intended, the game comes with a nice little poster. Yeah, um, didn't really hang this one, but I do like the way it looks. It's already uh, slightly falling apart. You can see like these thick lines here, and there are some holes in it because of it. But uh, it's a nice poster of the Arbiter of the Master Chief. And that was one of the benefits of buying physical copies. Kane and Lynch, Dead Men. Got it recently as well, and the reason I got it is because, you guessed it, Campaign Co-op. It's a fun heist game, and I've kind of always wanted to play it as a kid because I saw it on store shelves, and it looked kind of like James Bondy slash heist movie kind of game, and I wanted to play it, but my first experience was it on PC, and I played it, but it didn't have Campaign Co-op, so years later, this year I actually got it for the Xbox and we played it with my buddy and we had a lot of fun times. The only problem is it's a bit janky and the frame rate is a bit bad on the 360, but other than that it's a fun game with a fun little story. It was meant to have a... how should I put it? It was meant to have a movie tie-in starring Bruce Willis actually, but it never came to fruition, which is unfortunate. If you want to play Kane and Lynch, do get it in any way, shape or form, just play it, it's fun, experience it. Maybe not on 360 because again, the frame rate's pretty bad. Uh, single player is a bit better. But other than that, yeah, I do recommend getting it. Don't play the second one though. LA Noir. Again, unpopular opinion, but I don't really like it. <laughs> uh, at least not yet. I've only played it once and these things happen with me when I start playing a game and then I don't like it, then I come back two years later and I suddenly love it. Right now, I don't. Um, I've been having problems with the interrogation uh, se segments of the game and after like 20 attempts of failing the first tutorial interrogation, I just kind of gave up. 
you're meant to read a lot of cues and it's kind of fun in that way, but I'm just thinking of picking up on PC and just playing in there and trying one more time. But at the moment, I can't really comment on it. I just, yeah, don't feel it yet. Though again, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it'll be fun for me later. This is Kingdoms of Amalur. This game, uh, once again, I didn't complete, but the reason is a bit different. I actually like the game, but I want to get it on PC, and the reason I want to get it on PC, not because the 360 version is bad, but because this version in particular is completely in French. Now, there is a way to, to get like English subtitles, which I did, but I do want an English voiceover as well, because I'm feeling like I'm missing out on a part of the experience. But yeah, I'll come back to it later. Then we have the Mass Effect trilogy. <laughs> One, two, and three. Interesting part about this first game is I hated it at first. Now the reason I even got it is because I like Bioware RPG games. I've completed KOTOR and I loved it. I've recently finished the first Dragon Age and currently playing the second one. Yeah, you can never go wrong really with Bioware RPGs, at least at the time. So yeah, I started playing it and then I hated it. And then I hated it more. And then I stopped playing the game. I came back to it a year later and I fell in love with it. I completed it and then jump straight into 2 and 3. So, yes, I do recommend it. I've even recently bought the uh, Legendary Edition and completed it for like the third time, I believe. So yeah, a really fun series. Your saves carry over, your progress carries over to other games, and yeah, Mass Effect is great. Play them if you haven't. The trilogy is amazing. It's great. Even the third one. The third one has its problems, but it's a good piece of entertainment either way. I do also recommend 3. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, uh, there were two versions of this game. Remember, you remember Avatars? That was a thing. The Wii was popular back in the day, so the Xbox 360 wanted to copy that and they had, well, avatars for your, well, user on Xbox. Some copies came with the avatar uh, code to use, it was like the Master Chief armor. My friend had it, I didn't get it, and I didn't really care. But um, what can I say? It's a Cool little remaster, but there's no real reason to get it anymore. Um, the best way to play it is on PC these days, or the newer Xboxes. There is yet another remake coming, because 343 recently rebranded as Halo Studios, and they're now making another remake of the game. Though, this one is technically a remaster, not a remake, because a remaster is when you enhance the graphics, and just leave it at that, and that's about it. Uh, a remake is when you completely like restructure a game, kind of like Resident Evil 2 did in 2019. But um, yeah, mm, don't really recommend getting it, no real reason to. Uh, it's the same game as Halo Combat Evolved, just with different graphics and... Uh, there are some segments where the new graphics didn't do the game justice. Some areas look fantastic, like... There's this one level which is featured here on the box art, or actually even here too, technically. Which is called, what? Uh, no, not Truth and Reconciliation. Oh, yeah. The Silent Cartog... The, the Silent Carto Cartographer... Yeah, the Silent... Car There's a level called The Silent Cartographer, and uh, the graphics there hold up to this day. The water looks good, the skyboxes look amazing. For whatever reason, 343 couldn't replicate the skyboxes and make them as amazing as they did here in their other games, so I don't know what happened there. But, uh, yeah, this game looks fantastic. Halo 3 ODST. Halo 3 ODST. What can I say here? It's fun. It's a cool little spin-off. Has some different mechanics. They completely removed the battle rifle, which is like the go-to weapon in Halo 3. But yeah, this game is fun. What can I say about it? It also comes with a multiplayer disc, aside from the campaign, which includes the complete Halo 3 multiplayer. And for those people who still play Halo 3, multiplayer to this day on the 360, which is still possible thanks to the Halo Sunrise project. Uh, this is worth getting if you want to play it that way for whatever reason, and I recently did actually. Halo Wars. Uh, when I was buying this at my local EB Games, yes, EB Games, remember those? The person at the counter told me, are you sure you want to buy this game? It's quite difficult. It doesn't play like other Halo games. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure. I'm like, are you sure? He probably thought I was dumb, which I probably was, but uh, I enjoyed it. It was the second RTS I've ever played because the first one was Star Wars Empire at War. 
and I don't know, I just kind of fell in love with it. I beat it maybe like three times, maybe a bit more, but it's quite fun. I do recommend getting it on PC though these days, but um, yeah, fun game. I can't really say the same about Lost Planet 2. Now I'm sure uh, playing it multiplayer is fun, but playing it split screen, which is what I got this game for, is... Uh, the split screen just makes your uh, screen two small boxes and you can barely make out anything and it's kind of frustrating. So yeah, um, maybe I'll come back to it a bit later, maybe Capcom make a remaster, but uh, yeah, not feeling it, I don't know. Diablo. Reaper of Souls and Diablo 3. Same game, this one has more content. Diablo is fun, I've beaten the first one, the third one, and the fourth one recently. <sighs> Haven't beaten the second one, and that's partially because I play all Diablo uh, strictly cooperatively. And um, for whatever reason, my group of friends just never continue Diablo 2. We should come back to it a bit later, because Diablo 2 is fun. Uh, this one, uh, it's only fun when you play hardcore, because there's no real penalty for dying. What's the point of having a complex skill system and leveling up if, if there's no real consequences to beating enemies or them killing you, then what's the point of even playing? So, yeah, hardcore is the way to go for Diablo, especially for Diablo 4. Lord of the Rings War in the North. Uh, I got it recently, and I got it because it's one of the few RPGs out there that you can play in split-screen co-op. Um... Didn't start it yet, though I really, really want to. From what I heard, it's pretty good and I want to play it. I also do love The Lord of the Rings. So, yeah, I'll come back to it when I play it, I guess. Crash Bandicoot One of the Mutant. It's a sequel to Crash Bandicoot Crash on Titan and I didn't play it yet. It's also one of those recent purchases, but I don't know. Didn't get around to it yet. I heard it's worse than Crash on Titan, though some people say the opposite. But, uh, yeah, didn't try it out yet. Halo 2. What is there to say? I've, uh... <clears throat> have a little funny story here. So my Halo 2 has, uh, an instruction manual from the limited edition. How did this happen? Well, I told my friend, when I was 12, that the cover with the Master Chief looks cooler. And we traded. So I got the limited edition booklet, which it's a bit different, and uh, anybody want a digital camera? Yeah, looking at uh, these old adverts from uh, the early 2000s definitely looks kind of cool. What can you win? A home entertainment system, a digital camera. Yeah, this is so 2000s, I love it. <clears throat> the interesting thing about this game is, once again, I remember getting Halo 2, uh, well, the first copy on the um, for the OG Xbox, and... Uh, it didn't work. Well, it worked up until like level 6 or whatever, and then the game just wouldn't load. And yeah, the disc was busted. So my dad returned it, and then a week later he came back with this. I noticed the sticker saying not for resale. And uh, it turned out he got it from a local, well at the time a local uh, LAN gaming center. And they had like the entire, like at the time there was only five Halo games. They had all of them for sale, all five, and for whatever reason they were selling this one as well. Um, even though it wasn't originally meant to be sold. And he got me this, it was almost in mint condition when he got it. And uh, yeah, I played it, I loved it, and interestingly enough, it wasn't my first experience with Halo 2, because Halo 2 was my first game uh, in the Halo series that I played, and I played it on PC first. And the reason I really, 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 really wanted the Xbox version is because the PC version for Windows Vista was a bit busted. A lot of the graphical elements just didn't work. Um, Bloom was broken. A lot of sound effects, especially for the radio, they were completely busted as well. You couldn't really make out what characters were saying, and it was kind of annoying, so I wanted to experience it in its original form. Hunter The Reckoning, another one of those games I recently got and the reason I wanted to get it is to once again play Campaign Co. Didn't finish it yet though, I need to call in my other three buddies to continue it because playing 4 player couch co-op is fun, because socializing is important. Perfect Dark, Zero. Um. Well, the, the only reason I have the uh, Collector's Edition is not because I'm a big fan of Perfect Dark or anything, it's just from the guy that I wanted to purchase it. That was the only one he had. And it comes with a cool little comic. The actual box 
looks kind of good. Uh, the only problem is is that this game has terrible frame rate, so playing it co-op will be uh, a bit of a struggle for split screen, unfortunately. So um, yeah, keep that in mind. I'm thinking of going back to this game and finishing it on a, a newer console. From what I heard, the frame rate's slightly uh, better there. So having this is kind of pointless. I mean, it looks pretty on the shelf and that's about it. But uh, yeah, from what I played, I do like it. It's just the frame rate, it's not there. Uh, I want my frames and I want my game not to be a slideshow. Star Wars The Force Unleashed 2. Um, not as good as the first. Uh, the reason I got it for Xbox is because this game has a DLC, well, a piece of DLC that's exclusive to the consoles, and it wasn't intentional, it's just the way it turned out. The PC version didn't get the Endor DLC. The first Star Wars The Force Unleashed game had like, a, well, three what-if scenarios where Darth Vader dies, pretty much, and Starkiller takes his place, and you can play out some of the events of the original trilogy that way. And the second game had the Endor DLC, only for consoles, so at the time I only had a, uh, well, this game on PC. And on recent machines, the PC version of Star Wars The Force Unleashed doesn't really work that well. The compatibility is in there, it crashes a lot if it even boots. So, I got this one just to have like an easy access way to play it and have some fun. It looks graphically good too. And uh, yeah, bought myself the Andor DLC for it and played it and I did enjoy it. It's a cool what-if scenario. Pretty much the only reason I got it. Plus it looks kind of cool. Halo 4. This one is special because uh, this is the first ever, uh, well, limited edition I got. I don't know why I got the limited edition because I didn't really play uh, Xbox Live multiplayer. I was always a PC guy, like even before I got an Xbox, I just kind of preferred PC anyway, even the little me. But uh, yeah, because most of the extra content is digital. There's a bunch of weapon skins, some avatar skins for your 360 avatar, and uh, also a code for the Forward Onto Dawn TV series, which I accidentally used on my other Xbox Live account, which I lost later, which I don't know why I did that. I should have just used it on my main account, but I was small. I was a bit stupid, but yeah. Either way, this is probably one of the better collector editions I have. The box itself looks pretty nice. It does look like you're opening something really classified. My favorite part about this collector's edition is this booklet, and there's plenty of lore elements in it with correspondence between various characters and yeah it looks kind of it's kind of nice a lot about the weapons just some lore stuff but yeah it does feel authentic all these years later and still has that fresh smell of uh, a fresh video game and also has this uh came with this nice nice really nice a lot, a lot of stuff here nice poster of a halo spartan i believe it's the uh yeah, a Halo, Halo Spartan. I think it's the Mark VI Spartan, can't really tell for certain, but it, it does look pretty good. And the schematic style of this poster is really nice. I do love it a lot. Came with a bunch of codes, 14-day uh, Xbox Live trial, which I used. I used it in like 2018. <laughs> because in 2018, for whatever reason, I got my Xbox 360, pulled it out, started playing a bunch of games again, and I used it only then. Same with all these weapon skins. Code for the TV series, which, again... Oh, interesting thing about this. Minutes before the Xbox uh, 360 Marketplace closure, I actually went on Reddit and shared all these codes with the users, because there was a bunch of codes that I didn't use and I didn't really need to, it's just weapon skins and I didn't really care for them. And that's about it, that kind of completes the collection. A bunch of all this, of course the case. The case looks nice, looks still brand new. It still has that, uh, the smell of uh, a fresh video game. Yeah, one of these discs, which is the multiplayer disc, is pretty much useless these days. It has no use because the servers were shut down in like 2021, I believe. So uh, yeah, no real reason to uh, play the multiplayer. Uh, that sums up my uh, 360 collection. 
Let me know what you guys think. Um, do you want me to make another video for my PS2 collection? Because I do have that. I'm thinking of maybe making one for the PC because I've got quite a few games for the PC. So tell me in the comments, did you collect for the 360? How many games do you have and are there any recommendations that I should get? Please let me know in the comments and thank you all for watching and as always, until next time everyone.